We here at Beat On just want to say thank you for joining us every Saturday at noon for our virtual service. We appreciate your views, your engagement, and all of your donations. Continue to connect with us by following us on all of our social media platforms. Also, share our service and invite a friend. We hope to see you next Saturday. Tune in every Saturday at noon. Facebook Live for a powerful work with my pastor, Pastor Alonzo Walker, where you can learn and grow in your spiritual journey with Christ. And we love for you to be a part of our family. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Everything that you need, we got it
We thank you for tuning in with us again today. We got another good word for you. Praise God. I hope that God has blessed you and your families and has kept you these seven days to be able to come back and hear the word of the Lord. Somebody didn't make it back this week. Somebody's child did not make it. Somebody's father and mother did not make it. But God spared you one more time. And for whatever reason it was, praise God, you was in his thoughts and mind uh, to give you another chance to hear the word of God. We thank God for you for tuning in. But before we get into the word, dear hearts, we want to remind you all to be careful as you go out to the streets. Make sure that you're wearing your mask. Praise God when you're in enclosed places. And by all means, dear hearts, endeavor to get your shots. Okay? There's a lot of misunderstanding about the shots. People talk about it's part of the mark of the bees. And all. dear hearts, it has nothing to do with the mark of the beast. Some people are saying, well, you know, I remember when, you know, the um, black um, folks got, you know, sick, you know, with um, the syphilis. They gave it to, you know, us the syphilis and all, and we died and, and we scared we don't trust the white man and this might be another trick of the white man. The odds, this is a worldwide pandemic not a white man pandemic, okay? People in Canada, China, you know, Africa, all over the world. If it was limited to wipe us out, then it would be right here in the United States wiping out black folk, okay? That's not happening. This sickness is indiscriminate, okay? It's indiscriminate. It's worldwide, okay? So it's not a part of the mark of the beast, mark of the beast, but 666, uh, mark them in your hand, mark them in your forehead. Can't buy or sell. This had nothing to do with that. Okay? Okay, all this is is um, something to help not prevent you from catching it, but prevent you from having the um, full effect of the virus where it won't take you down to the point where it may, you know, kill you or break you down so where you be so weak that you, you can't make it, okay? So that's what it is. It's a form of protection, not so much uh, a healing or prevention, but just to protect you from the full effect of that virus, okay? So it don't have nothing to do with the mark of the bees. It don't have nothing to do with trying to get the black man <laughs> the odds. The black man are all the ones that are dying while the white man is getting the... Uh, <laughs> He's getting the shots. <laughs> okay, so this is not a black white thing. Okay, this is something that's affecting mankind across this whole world. Okay, so let's do our best to protect ourselves you know, and protect your kids. Okay, I understand that there are some people that's even beat on that had COVID, right? Don't know if you had your shots or not. But I tell you one thing, right? If I'm going to die, I'm going to die trying to live, <laughs> okay? That's why I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to die trying to live. In other words, I'm going to live as long as I can and die when I can't help it. Uh, that's what Pastor Walker did. Oh, you come coming by the blood, Pastor. You ought to have faith. I'm coming by the blood, right? And I'm going to be covered by Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have double, double for you're the double man. I'm gonna have double protection. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have double protection. Uh, I'm gonna be covered by the blood and covered by fire. <laughs> and so far it's been working. I'm still here. Okay? So watch past it and watch past it. Follow me as <laughs> follow Christ. <laughs> Pastor's still here, okay? So uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your shots. Protect yourself, protect your family, protect your kids, all right? This is another reason why we haven't had services as of yet. And um, at least, you know, in the location, dear hearts, but this thing is still rampant. It's still rampant, dear hearts. So I'm trying to protect the safety of the members. 
Okay? Now, if you can't survive in God and stay saved outside of a, a church, you ain't going to be saved anyway. Okay? Because the whole plan of God was to make us a sanctuary. <laughs> uh, understand your word. Uh, you're supposed to be the temple of God. Right? Not the building. You're supposed to be the temple. You should be at church anywhere, everywhere. Uh, Paul told Timothy, lift up hands everywhere. I'm uh, singing songs and making melody in your heart. Uh, glory to God. Uh, he ain't say do it in the church building. You ought to be a church wherever you go. When people speak to you, they ought to be able to feel the presence of God. Uh, they be like, ooh, I feel the presence of God. Because when they're in front of you, they're at church. <laughs> uh, why? Because the church is in you. Uh, and that's what Pastor Walker is laboring for, to put the church in you. Don't fall out because you can't get in the building. Right? Ain't no building going to save you. Ain't no building got the presence of God in it. None. Uh, unless it's put in there by us. You got to bring that thing. And that's the problem now. You've been coming to church all, this, all these years, living on somebody else's spirit. Uh, you can't wait to hear worship. You can't wait to hear pastor. All that's good. Uh, but you need to have your own. And, and, and this is manifesting that people don't have their own and they're relying on others right, to fulfill their spirituality. Can't do that no more, dog. Uh, you got to get this thing for yourself. And have church wherever you want to have church at, wherever you want to have church. So that's the thing about the ark. That thing represented that God had, you know, had them to carry the ark because his presence was in it. But when Jesus died, we no longer need the ark. Good God Almighty, we are the ark. Uh, we are the ark. Uh, Jesus represented that showbread in the ark. Uh, now he's not the showbread, he is God himself. He's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Praise God. All those attributes. Uh, all the things that he represented. He represented God through creation, Son of redemption, Holy Ghost of the church, and all three of those things are in you. Uh, and because it's in you, Paul declares uh, that we are complete in him. Good God Almighty. Huh? My Lord, my Lord. I feel like having church right now. Uh, we are complete in him. Mm -hmm. My God, those that have repented and got filled with the Holy Ghost so you can have church everywhere, anywhere. Uh, when Paul was locked up in jail, he wasn't in no church. Uh, good God, they got with his friend Silas. said, come on, young folks, you sing and I pray. They got to sing and pray, and the jail began to rock. They wasn't in no church, uh, but church came. Because <laughs> uh, they had the church in them. Come on, y'all, let's go to church. <laughs> Glory to God. My Lord, my Lord. Y'all ready for the word? Uh, let's lift our minds for a for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, again, we come before you to thank you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Thank you for seeing another day, Lord, we've never seen before. Glory to God, if it had not been for you on our side, God, where would we be? But we thank you because you kept our mind, kept our heart. Brought us back another time, oh God. We pray that you let your word, Lord, dwell in us richly with all wisdom and understanding. Good God Almighty, we ask you to strengthen us, oh God, and end with man. My God, that we may be able, Lord, to manifest your glory. Thank God for Jesus right here on earth. In the name of Jesus, Lord, if you do these things, we give you the praise and give you the honor. In Jesus' name, our soul says amen and amen. Thank the Lord. We thank you, dear hearts. We get ready to go to the word of God. And if you got your Bibles, turn to me to Jeremiah 29. The book of Jeremiah 29. And we want to start reading at the 11th verse. Oh, thank the Lord. 11th verse. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This is God speaking here. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Uh huh. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Uh huh. To give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. We want to speak to you from the subject. Do you know God's plan for you? Do you know God's plan for you? You know, that is the million dollar question that a lot of Christians ask themselves. Right? What is my what is my gift? What is my assignment? What do God have for me to do? Right? And a lot of us don't know that. 
But you're not alone in that. Because look how God spoke this through Jeremiah. For I know the thoughts that I had toward you. Now, he didn't say he was sharing them. <laughs> uh, he, he didn't say he's going to share the plan. He said, I know the plan. Uh, I know the thoughts that I had towards you. So whatever God's plan is, he got the plan. And he don't always reveal the plan to us. Right? We just have to be a vessel ready to be used by him anytime and anywhere. Because he don't always share the plan. Right? It's his thoughts. He said, I know the thoughts that I had towards you. Uh, and that's what he said about those thoughts. Right? He said, uh, their thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Now, here's the million dollar question. What is that expected end? Because sometimes the expected end looks evil. <laughs> he said it's not evil. But see, that's in his eyes because he know the plan. But in our eyes, sometimes it's evil because you take right now. You have this pandemic and there's been a moratorium on putting folks out of their apartments, out of their rental dwellings, and preventing from having foreclosures. Okay, well, they went to court on that. And the Supreme Court says that the CDC doesn't have the power to do that. Yeah, don't have the power to do that. And they rejected extending that moratorium. What does that mean, Pastor Walker? That some of us may get sent out. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see no rejoicing <laughs> at being sent on the curb. Right? Some of our credit, watch this, man, has been affected. Because you lost your job, can't pay your rent, can't pay your mortgage. So if you get put out, there could be difficulty and you find another place. But you read this, God said that his thoughts wasn't of evil. Right? This is what he said. For I know the thoughts that I had toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. That's his thoughts. He don't have evil thoughts, but he didn't say evil wasn't going to be done. <laughs> uh, he just don't have no thoughts of evil, but he didn't say evil wasn't going to become us or bad things wasn't going to become us. And sometimes, watch this now, sometimes that which is bad may be his will. And this is what we don't hear when you hear the scripture quote. Right? Because we think that because we're of God, nothing bad is going to befall us. Bill Hodge, let me tell you something. That's the biggest lie and the biggest deception in the church. Just for being in God, a whole lot of things going bad that's going to befall us. A lot. Uh, yes, it is. A lot of things going to befall us. And this is what hurts a lot of Christian people, and that's called Christian folks to not serve God, right? Give you a case of point. You read this scripture. And your mom gets sick. Your mom got cold. Your mom is a Christian woman. You done seen your mom go to church. You done seen your mom cook cakes and pies and dinners for the church. You done seen your mom work two and three jobs because she didn't have no husband. Right? You seen all of that. Seen your mother scuff and work without. Now she got cold. So since you seen your wife do that, your mom do that, and your mom go to church, Right? Grandma and all of them, now they're sick with COVID. Now you're going to go to God and pray because you know that God going to bring your mama out of this. Right? You know God going to bring your mama out because of what your mama did. Guess what? Your mama die. Your child die. Your husband die. You know a lot of us have lost faith in God for that very reason. You see bad things happen to good people. Huh? But what you never consider is the plan. It's the plan. Right? 
they are just as sure as you live. <laughs> we got to die. You, we can't live forever. I don't care how long you pray or how much you pray. Everybody got to die. And everybody is a part of a plan. Right? And this plan is not our plan. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Right? So what we have to understand, dear hearts, we have to come to grips with whatever God's plan is. We have to let it be done. And sometimes God's plan includes bad things happening. Right? But you can't lose faith in him because bad things happen. They have to happen. They have to happen. Because in God's plan, right, when bad things happen, hmm, sometimes those bad things is the very thing that brings us to the expected end. <laughs> huh? It brings us to the expected end. Case in point, Bible. When Joseph was just a young man, he was 17 years old. He has a dream that he saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars do obeisance to him. So he shares it with his brother and his mother. Huh? Then he has a second dream that they were in the field, him and his brother, and his sheep rose up. And the brother's sheep made obeisance to his sheep. So when Joseph got to explaining these dreams to the parents and to the brother, they like, wait a minute, you, you, you think you're going to rule over us? Right? Watch this. He saw right, but he didn't know the expected end. He didn't know the plan in general. And in that plan, there was a lot of hurt. A lot of hurt. Right? It was hurt for him, hurt for his father, who was a man of God. Now watch this. And in all that hurt, it was according to God's plan. This is why we have to be careful about when we complain, when we cry, or when God is doing things that don't line up with your plan, we forget that he has the master plan. I don't care what your dreams are. I don't care what your goals are. They have to line up with his plan. Sometimes they don't. Right? Now, Israel, which was Jacob, he did not plan for his son to be taken away from him. Right? As a young man. And his son did not plan to be sold in another country. Right? Now, watch this. Israel is a man of God. You know God never revealed to him that that was part of his plan? You know how many days and nights Israel prayed to God about his son? You can't imagine the hurt that Jacob felt concerning his son. And God never exposed the plan. This boy, then go to Joseph, he gets put in a pit, sold to merchant men to be sold down into Egypt all the way, right, far away from his father's mother, his sister and his brother. He's in another country. Now, do you think that Joseph thought that that was God's plan? <laughs> huh? You think that? Does it look like now Joseph's <laughs> brothers make no piece of two of Can you imagine in Joseph's mind, right, that dream that he had, now it looks like a nightmare? But you know one thing I learned in reading the story, and I want you to learn? I don't read where he complained. I can't read. I haven't found the scriptures. Make somebody show it to me. I don't read where he complained. And this is where we got to get. 
And that's why sometimes bad things happen to bring us to that end to develop, to not complain when bad things happen. Because sometimes you don't know the plan. Huh? Sometimes the bad thing is for a good purpose. So is it really bad? <laughs> huh? Is it really bad? It's bad in your eyes because there's some discomfort with it. Huh? There's going to be some discomfort with some of us being put out. Hmm? Being put out. It is. All right? And I understand all that. Huh? I understand. I can relate to it. Right? But at the same time, there is a plan of God. Now watch this. Now he gets sold down to Egypt. Right? And he was down there for years. Old man Jacob still playing. God never exposed the plan. So, Dale, what are you saying, Pastor Mark? What are you trying to say? Dale Hospital, during this pandemic, there may be some bad things, some terrible things, some turbulent things happen in your life. All right? Let's be like Joseph. Don't complain because you don't know what God is doing. It's part of the plan. And if it's part of God's plan, it has an expected end. And that end is going to be good for you. It's going to work out for your good. It's going to work out for your good. I promise you. All right? I promise you. It's going to work out. Go a little further first. Then shall ye call upon me, and shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I will hearken unto you. Now see, now, apparently, when you read this, there were people praying to him, and he didn't answer them. And a lot of us are experiencing that right now. Right? You praying to God, you see your life flashing before you, you see things looking bad, right? And you're praying to God, and he doesn't answer a word. Just like he did old man Jacob. He never answered a word. He never answered a word. Right? You know when God answered Jacob? I mean, yeah, old man Jacob. Oh my God. Jacob had, he had to be like a hundred and something years old. Yeah, because it says that when old man, when Pharaoh asked them, how old are you? How old are you? And his response was, he was old, right? He said, and I have, I have few good days. That's what he said. I have few good days, right? But his latter end was his best days. That was the expected end that God had for him. But look at his hurt. Look at his pain. And watch this. And when all these years God been, he been praying, God never answered. Like he never heard. When Joseph sends for his father and his family, say, I'm down in Egypt. Right? The father thinks Right? That this is a host. Then he looks at all the cattle that Joseph sent back and the asses that Joseph sent back that was laden with food. Then he realized there must be some truth to the matter. Right? Because he didn't want to go down to Egypt, another country. Right? And not Egypt of all countries. Watch this. Then God speaks to him and tells him to go. All them years God was silent. All them years. All of them years. He was silent. But now he tells them to go. So why, did he, why is he speaking now? Because his plan for him has been fulfilled. What was the plan? God saw some 20, 30 years later that there was going to be a famine that was going to last for seven years and kill all of them. And God got a plan to save them. But the plan has some pain in it. Good God Almighty. Uh, I'm trying to curse somebody today. Uh, the plan has some pain in it. It was going to wipe out the, the entire family. But God had a plan for the son to be sold in another country and give that son favor. Wow! 
that saved the entire family. Uh, and then when you read the story, it said that Jacob left and the name all his sons and all his sons' children, right? It was almost 70 souls that would have been wiped out had it not been for God's plan that nobody agreed with. Uh, so what I'm trying to talk to you about, dear husband, do you know God's plan for you? You may not. But I say don't fret. Don't complain. He gonna bring you to an expected end. Huh? That's why he say, I know the thoughts that I have. He don't always share the thoughts with you. Huh? But he know the thoughts. It's gonna bring you to an expected end. Hmm? I had this house that I renovated and I was planning on selling it. It's been on the market for a little while. I wake up this morning and I said, Well, I'm going to take this house off the market. She said, well, You going to take it off the market? Mm -hmm. She said, Why? I said, You know, I got a funny feeling this is somebody's expected end. Uh, God got a plan for somebody. I said, at the same time, it's one for us. Sometimes you might want to sell something that you need to be holding right now. Huh? Because it can be a, a greater blessing down the line. You're looking at the blessing right now. But God may have a blessing for you greater down the line. But he got a, he, he got to have a place for somebody to stay. And I'm a Christian man. <laughs> Somebody's credit going to be jacked up. Ain't going to be able to get a place. Hmm? I'm trying to tell you, you don't know God's plan. Huh? I'm a landlord. And right now, I'm a hurting landlord because of the pandemic. But you got to put all these things in God's hand. And why do I, why am I handling this like this? Because I've been there before. I've been there before. Right? I know what it is to try to trust in God. You see no way. And here God had a way for you. Right? When Abraham get ready to slew his son, he didn't know there was a round court in the thicket, but God had a way. Uh, you don't know that God got a way for you. He got a round court in the thicket for you. You got to be encouraged. Hold on. Uh, you don't know God's plan for you. Uh, you don't know God's entire plan. Sometimes it got bad things uh, that's a part of it. It got some hills that's a part of it. It got some valleys that's a part of it. But notwithstanding their hearts, if you just hold on, uh, God gonna bring you out. Uh, the words of Donald McClurkin, what do you do when you've done all you can? Glory to God. And sing like this, never done. Uh, good God of mine. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you do? He said, you just stand. Glory to God. Uh, you just stand. Sometimes when you don't know what to do, sometimes you just gotta stand. Uh, when you done gave all you had. Uh, my God, thank the Lord, and has done all you can. And it just seemed like it's not enough. It seemed like it's not working. Sometimes you just got to stand. Glory to God. Uh, you just stand. Uh, you may not know the plan, but God got a plan for you. Uh, glory to God. God got a plan for you. He going to work it out for your good. Because the Bible declares that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Uh, and sometimes you got to be tried to determine whether you love God or not. Uh, because some people, I ain't serving God. I done got put out. I ain't serving God. I prayed by my mama, and my mama died. Ever since that, I ain't trusting God no more. And see, and that's what God was trying to show you, that your heart wasn't in him like you thought it was in him. Uh, because in your mind, right, God is serving you. Oh, no, no, I don't think that person will. Oh, yes, you do. Because when you pray to God and he's not answering according to what or when you want him to answer, and, and when he doesn't do it, you walk away from him, you don't want to serve him no more. Okay, so you're asking God to serve you. And God don't serve no man. Right? Because it doesn't work out the way you want it to work out. It don't go the way you want it to go. You prayed and God didn't answer. Huh? Dear hearts, we got to read these scriptures, man, to understand. God don't give you everything you want. When 
The old man David slept with Bathsheba. Got Bathsheba pregnant. He turned his plate down. Now he knew it was wrong what he did, but he wanted that son. That son got sick. He went on a fast, and he started praying to God to raise that child up. And that child died. And he was a man of God. That child died. So what did he do? How did he handle that? He got up, washed his face, put his clothes on, and went to sit down and eat. Everybody looked and said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Didn't he just lose his son? Did he just get up like that now? Huh? He had matured to the place to come to the point. I'm going to pray. And if it's God's will to heal him, he'll be healed. But if not, he is God. And I'm going to acquiesce to his will. And his will was to not raise the boy up. I'm not going to get up and mumble and grumble with God. So he got battle right enough and carry on about his life. That's what we got to learn to do, dear heart. We mumble, we grumble, we complain because we want God to work for us. He doesn't work for us. And Christians, we have to learn that. He doesn't work for us. We work for him. And because we work for him, and because we serve him, we have to come to the place, Lord, whatever your will is. And if I got to suffer, if I got to suffer to please you, glory to God, then let it be done. Huh? Glory to God. Huh? They didn't know that when he resisted the king's commandment, mm, glory to God, that he's going to be tossed in the lion's den and be killed. He didn't know what God was going to do. Huh? There are no scriptures that explain what was God going to do. Huh? But he just made a stand. And because of his stance, there was a price to be paid. Huh? There was a price to be paid. And that price was to be tossed to the lion's den. And he was willing to do that. And we read about that. And that encourages us when we read about Daniel. And Daniel goes in a lion's den and God locks the lion's jaw. But he didn't know the lion was going to do that. He didn't know that. So what I need for you to understand, today, today, we are living in pistols. Somebody is watching us. And they're watching our suffering to see how we're going to come out. Huh? To see how we're going to come out. To see how we're going to endure. And when they see us, they are encouraged by our sacrifice. We are the epistle now. And as I was reading this, you know who I thought about? I thought about my good friend, Vanessa Thomas. I watched her down through the years. Young lady, early 20s, uh, had four children, didn't have a husband, had one that didn't work, but she stayed in the church. And I know she prayed, she prayed for a man, and she prayed for God to deliver him. That was her prayer. And she was living sanctified. Uh, I can vouch for that. She was living sanctified. Young. And she stayed single for years. For years. But stayed in the church. Stayed in God. And as she prayed to God to change that situation. And God didn't change it. He didn't change it. And I know she probably said to herself, I wonder why. Because you are somebody's epistle. You got young ladies today that are struggling to do that. And they need to see somebody. Uh, marriage is not good enough. That's 2,000 years ago. They need to see a young Mary of today. Uh, and you are that young Mary. Uh, and because you prayed, uh, the very husband that didn't work out, your prayer brought him back to church. Good God of life. Uh, Brought him back to church. Uh, and he's saved. Glory to God. And because you stood for Christ, thank God for Jesus. Uh, the children's in the church. And they may not be doing all what you want them to do. 
but they know the way. They know how to come back. Good God Almighty. Uh, because of your stance. Uh, because of your stance. Then why did God choose you to suffer like that? Because he knew you could do it. Glory to God. Uh, he knew you could do it. Thank the Lord. See, some of us can bet suffering. And, 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 and sometimes you wonder why God is not bringing you out to suffer. Because sometimes your suffering is for somebody else. It ain't always for you. It's for others to read your epistle. Glory to God. To see you go through. Huh? And watch you. Glory to God. Huh? And get encouraged from watching you. Say, I don't see how you did it. Then you gave able to tell them about God did it. Huh? Everybody got to walk. There are homosexuals out there struggling. Right? Struggling. But there are some homosexuals huh, that have fought and they won the fight. And there are other struggling ones that love the Lord. That love the Lord. And they are not doing as well in their fight. And sometimes they're being judged because they're not, you know, doing as well, right? Thinking that they're going to hell and, you know, got all these negative stuff to say, but all of us don't have the same strength. All of us don't have it, right? But that one that's weak, right, is looking at the strong. And sometimes the strong got the bed in front of the other weak. God, God, that, look, that wouldn't be written if God knew everybody was going to be strong. Huh? And, 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 and look, and the scripture doesn't actually declare all the different weakness. And homosexuality could be one. Lesbian could be another. A whole master, a drunk, a drunk addict. He didn't tell you what the weakness was going to be. Good God Almighty. But he got somebody strong in each one of those behaviors. Good huh? God Almighty. To give those that are weak hope. Huh? You don't know God's plan. Thank the Lord. And sometimes you wonder and you fighting with why I turned out like this. Um, why is this my infirmity? Why is this my thorn in my flesh? Sometimes God chose you to be that person. Uh, that others can look at you and catch hope. You are their epistle. There's no homosexual that wasn't apostle. So you can't go to the, the day of scripture and get encouraged by it. <laughs> huh? Good God am I. You can't go there. But you might be this living epistle for the day. That God gave you strength to overcome it. Huh? We don't know the plan. Why you have to suffer certain things. Right? But being known unto you that your suffering is not in vain. God knows his thoughts towards you. Their thoughts of peace to bring you to an expected end. Now his thoughts might be of peace, but that don't mean your life may be peaceful. Huh? Your life may be turbulent to get you to that expected end. Don't give up because the early part of your life is turbulent. You done lost your job. You done lost your house. You may even lost a child. You may even lost a spouse. Job lost all of that. Right? But God brought him to an expected end. Right? And he's going to bring you to one. You just be encouraged and hold on. And after you've done all you can do, you just stand. Huh? You just stand. You're going to be all right. Uh, You're going to be all right. Uh, go a little further first. And ye shall seek me and find me. And ye shall seek me and find me, which means that there must have been a time when people were praying and didn't find them. But, but when God got ready to allow them to find them, he said, you should seek me and I'll make myself known. But what it implies that it had to be a time that they tried and he didn't say anything. I'll uh, read. When ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, said the Lord. Hold it just a minute. When you shall search with me with all your heart. Some of us have never given God all our heart. And sometimes circumstances bring you to that point that you have to give God all your heart. Because there's something about good living. Oh, my God. It's just hard to give all when you're living well. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's just hard. It's hard to give God all your heart when everything is well. And God know that. 
Uh -huh. I'll read. And I will be found of you, said the Lord. Uh -huh. And I will turn away your captivity. Uh, hold a minute. I will turn away your captivity, which means that apparently your captivity was a part of his plan. <laughs> uh, if he said, I'm going to turn it away, right? So if he said he's going to turn it away, that meant that, hey, he knew of it. Have you ever looked at this here? And I know I have. You have God here. You got all power. He tell you what gonna happen to you. He's telling you way in advance. Now, give you a case in point. Abraham. He prays, telling God about his desired child and all this here. Then God speaks to him about his seed. How your seed gonna be in bondage for 400 years. Now, some of us may not ask the question, but sometimes I ask the question, Lord. If you know that, why don't you do something about it? I mean, really, I mean, someone be scared, but you know, but that is a legitimate question. Lord, you telling me that it, way before it happened, that my seed gonna be in bondage for four hundred years, and you know that. And all powers in your hand? And you don't do nothing? Huh? I understand. Some of you lost children. Lord, I'm a Christian. My child, my child got shot and killed. That was my child. I'm living right. And you let my child die. I'm getting sent out? And I keep your commandments? And I'm going to get sent out? When you look at it from a logical perspective, it don't make sense. It really don't. But that's why you can't follow God through logic. <laughs> You're going to be lost in us. You gotta follow God by faith. <laughs> the just shit live by faith. <laughs> because he don't know the plan. So God telling him that his seed gonna be in bond for the year, it must have been a plan. He said, gentlemen, we're gonna bring him out. That was his plan. It ain't your plan, it ain't my plan. We don't like the plan. Quite now, we don't like the plan. Suffering involved in that. But it was his. Huh? And, and, and the plan consists of the whole world now know about this God that did that. So it had to be the way God says to get his name out there. But we don't think like that, but he does. Right? We don't know why God allowed our loved ones to die. We don't know. We don't know why tragedy happened to good people. Sometimes it's a part of the plan. Sometimes it's a part of the plan. And what we had to come to grips with, if it's his plan, Lord, let your plan be. Let your plan be. He said, I'll bring you out of this captivity. Uh-huh. And I will gather you from all the nations uh -huh. and from all the places where I have driven you, said the Lord. Well, look at this here. Right? You take right now, this is live history. In Afghanistan, right? This ain't no dancing and shouting mess. This make you think about God's plan. And when bad things happen to you, and some things, some people are gonna spend some bad things during this pandemic. Don't faint. Don't faint. You stand. We don't know the plan. Watch this. Now, it took this country 20 years to fight a war. Right? To fight a war. And decides to pull out. Now, when they pulled out, they said, we want to make sure all Americans are out. Look at God now. We want to make sure all Americans are out. But there were some Afghanistans, Afghanistanians, that helped America, right? Who don't know God, because you can't teach the gospel in Afghanistan. 
huh? And there were some Af Afghanistanians who were not a part of helping the United States that wanted to get out, right? Now God makes a way to get these people out of their land, out of their country, that come to a land that believes in God. Just God Almighty, because every nation tongue must hear the gospel, and God got chosen for. Good God Almighty, uh, that He chose to allow to hear the gospel, and all of Afghanistan's, right? My God, that's over there in a place that won't allow them to hear the gospel. Now you come to a place, good God, that believe in God. Uh, it might have took hundreds of years. I don't know how old Afghanistan is, right? But uh, the fulfillment of 20 years for the United States to bring the past, maybe somebody prayer saying, Lord, get me out of this country. I want to hear your word. Good God Almighty. You don't know how folk were praying. And God made a way. Uh, and tell you how desperate the situation is, they own the plane, wing, to get out of that country. To get out of that country. Willing to sacrifice their life and fall from the wing. That's how bad conditions are. But there were some that made it on the plane because they were in God's thoughts. Good God Almighty. Huh? I know the thoughts that I had towards you. They're thoughts of peace to bring you to an expected end. Uh, bring those people over here, people reaching out to them. People, you got the citizens of America reaching out to them, bringing things to them, bringing them food, bringing them all kind of stuff. Uh, we got states that's reaching out to them. Look what God is doing to her. But he did it what? Through a bad situation. It's chaotic over there. It's chaotic over there. But God brought them through that. God going to bring you through what you're going through. You just hold on. Huh? You don't know the plan. You don't know the plan. Sometimes your plan, the plan might be getting you, you know, set out. We don't know. But it might be to get you a better house. Mm -hmm. huh? You don't know. Huh? Yeah, you might have lost your job. You might have lost it because he got a better one. Huh? I mind when I was scalding, scalding. Mm -hmm. Pitney Bowles was hiring. 300 people applied for the job. And I was one of the 300. And as the supervisor was touring me around the place, he said, you know, I like you. I'm going to tell my supervisor, I want you. Mm -hmm. So I said, whoa, man, look at God. Boy, what happens that be? Look at God. Right? So I go home, and I'm waiting on the call, looking over at the phone. I'm going to ain't ringing, though. <laughs> <laughs> Couple days went by, phone ain't ring. You know, so I called the supervisor and uh, talked to him. I said, "I thought you said that uh, you was gonna hire me." He said, "I did." You know, I told the uh, supervisor I was gonna hire you. He said, "Let me get back with you." All right, I'm gonna talk to him. So he didn't get back. The supervisor got back. I said, Mr. Walker, I said we had one position, but 300 people applied for that position. And you was one of the 300. Unfortunately, you know, we got, no, she said, we got down to three, and you was one of the three. Unfortunately, we chose somebody else. I said, yeah, but Mr. Sosa said he was going to go have me. She said, yeah, but I'm his boss. I'm <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, down. I'm his boss. And I chose another young lady. I said, yes, man. I don't get far up, boy. I was broken. Boy, my little heart was cracked into. Uh, so later on, I see, I'm walking, I see my brother. He said, hey, man, how's it going? Yeah, man, not too good, dog. I said, what's wrong? I said, man, I went to apply for this job, man, and I thought I had that job. I said, uh, and the lady, man, told me, man, that they gave that job to somebody else. And he don't go to church. Do you know what he said? He said, you know why you didn't get that job? I thought he might going to tell me I had a certain skill set or something, right? I said, no, why? He said, because that wasn't meant for you. <laughs> and this is, this is the unchurch. <laughs> uh, that wasn't meant for you. 
God got something else for you. Uh, and as a matter of fact, man, you serve God. You ain't, you ain't got nothing to worry about. God going to look out for you. Well, that would hurt you to say. Glory to God. Uh, you don't know how God going to feed you. You don't know how God going to encourage you. But God had a plan. Uh, and what he told me, it worked out exactly how he did. What he said, the job that I wanted uh, before that job, 20 years. I worked there 20 years ago uh, as a stay-in school. Uh, and I always declared that I wanted to work at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Uh, and after 20 years, they called. <laughs> uh, you don't know God's plan for you. But one thing I know, uh, I know the thoughts that God had toward me. They were thoughts of peace to bring me to an expected end. And that expected end, he gave me the desire of my heart. Good God of mine. Uh, that's why I can testify. That Bob declares over there in 37 Psalm. Fret not thyself because of evil doing. Neither be thy envious against the works of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. But trust in the Lord and do good. And verily thou shalt be faithful. Uh, delight thyself in him, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Glory to God. Uh, commit thy way to him, and the Bible says, and he shall bring it to pass. We got to remember that. Commit thy way unto him. Commit thy way unto him. And when you do that, they say, he shall bring it to pass. Not you. He shall bring it to pass. Why should he bring it to pass? Because he know the thoughts that he had towards you. Uh, go over there, go. There's a force of peace to bring you to an expected end. Uh, going back to Joseph, good God Almighty. By the time old man Jacob got old and getting ready to die, and all the food in the land was about gone, uh, and they had to go all the way down to Egypt to get food. Good God from Zion. And when they got down there, they didn't know that God had raised up a brother. Good God from Zion. Uh, to be around the second leader in the whole kingdom. Thank the Lord. And God has sent them there to prepare my God to deliver his people from that family. But they didn't know it. Neither did he know it. Huh? Because it was God's thoughts. It wasn't his thought. It wasn't old man's thought. But it was God's thoughts huh? to save them from a famine that was going to come up 20 years later. Glory to God. Huh? And when they got down there uh, and he revealed himself. They began to get scared and thought that he was going to pay them back for what he done. Uh, he said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. In other words, man, it was God's plan that this should happen. He said, go back and tell my father that I'm alive. Uh, glory to God. Tell my father I'm alive. Uh, and when he went to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh about it. Pharaoh said, look, I'm going to give you the best of all the land in Egypt. Uh, you think out what you want. Get the best and bring your family down here. Glory oh, to God. Uh, that's the kind of God we serve to bring you to an expected end. I got about seven more minutes, and I want to go to Joel right quick, right quick, right quick. Go to Joel 1. Let me show you something. Right quick, right quick. Joel 1. Uh, and then we're going to jump to 2 right quick. Hmm? Joel 1, first lady. 1 and 1. 1 and 1, read. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, uh -huh. hear this, ye old men. Hear this, ye old men. And give in. And give in. All ye inhabitants of the land. Uh -huh. Have this been in your days, uh -huh. or even in the days of your fathers? A question there. Have this been in your days, or even the days of your father? Whatever he's about to do. And look what he told him to do. Uh huh. Tell ye your children of it. See, and this is what we're not doing today. Uh, he said, look, I want you to tell your children about this. Uh huh. And let your children tell their children. Let their children tell their children. See, because God wants his name known. And God wants a remnant in every generation. That's why you young folks, huh? You young folks, huh? and you millennials, you got to start teaching your children about God. Bring your children to church. Teach your children. Have Bible class with your children. Put that word in them children. Huh? Them children, my children know my suffering. They know what I've been through. Put God in mind. And they seen God bring me out. So now they all are serving God because they saw their father and their mother's pattern. 
Glory to God. They may not be perfect, but they're following the best they can, the pattern. Uh, and now they have to learn God for themselves. So now they got to have some ups. They got to have some downs. They got to have some pain. Uh, glory to God. They got to have failed marriages. They got to have a place to stay. They got to have money shortages. Why? Uh, not because they can't get help from their parents, right? But they got to know God for themselves. Glory to God. And that's what God telling you. Teach them. Teach your children, uh huh. And their children another generation. And their children another generation. This thing can come be passed down. Uh, then we ain't doing that sometimes. Sometimes I'm chewing on the ball field and all kind of stuff, playing ball while you in church. What kind of example is that? You don't do no stuff like that. Yeah, I got them playing hockey. I got them playing soccer. They have basketball problems. And here you in church, word, uh, learning the word of God. What kind of stuff is that? Huh? Good God Almighty. You love your children? Bring them children to church. But I don't say, train the child the way it should go. Uh, now you gonna go the way it should go, but don't train your child? Mm -hmm. uh, come on, then. what kind of stuff is that? Put that word in your child. Mm -hmm. uh, read what it says. That which the palmer word have left, have the locusts eaten. It said, look at it. He said, that which the palmer word have left, have the locusts ate, eaten. Uh huh. And that which the locusts have left, have the canker worm eaten. Uh huh. Have the canker worm eaten. Uh huh. And that which the canker worm have left, uh -huh. have the caterpillar eaten. Uh huh. Has a caterpillar eat? Awake, ye drunkards, uh -huh. and weep, uh -huh. and howl, uh -huh. all ye drinkers of wine, uh -huh. because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. See, sometimes God gonna cut off good times. Uh, that's what He's trying to tell you. Sometimes God gonna cut off good times, and this and this is one of them times. Huh? It's been cut off, right? You've been cut off. Now you ever read in the scriptures? I'm gonna restore the years. But that's what He's talking about. A lot of people quote the scriptures, but they don't know what He's talking about. See, they had eaten it up. Right? See, the palmer worm have left, uh, have left what the locusts have eaten, right? And that which the locusts have left had the canker worm eaten, right? So what God is saying is, things were eaten up. Uh, but now, if you go over to the second chapter, uh, good God Almighty, and drop down into the, the uh, 25th verse. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Good God Almighty. See, they ate it up over there, but if you just stand in your bad time. Good God Almighty, because you don't know the fullness of the plan. Uh, God may cause them to eat it up over here, but he restored it over there. Uh, glory to God. Sometimes you quote the scriptures, but you know not what you're quoting. Uh, sometimes to restore something, something has to be lost. Uh, and sometimes we don't want to lose nothing. So if you haven't lost nothing, how are you going to be restored to something? And you don't know God as a restorer unless you lost something. You don't know God as a healer unless you've been sick. Good God about it. Huh? So you can't serve God and nothing bad happen. You got to know who that God is. Huh? Good God. I'll read what it says. The canker worm and the caterpillar uh -huh. and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. See, sometimes God sent them pestilence among you. Huh? Good God about it. Then he tell them I sent them, right? Watch this. To send you to a place to pray, to fast, uh, to grow, and develop. And then once God is pleased with your servant, good God Almighty, through your losses, through your patience, through your praising God in that, then he'll restore the years. Uh, he'll return that captivity. Uh, and he'll make captivity captive. Good God Almighty. And God will start giving you that thing with the lovers that they ate and the king of world that they ate. And the uh, he'll restore those things. Right? Glory to God. Uh, so you read things like this, but sometimes you just read partial. Right? You just read partial. You're just talking about the restoration of it, but it has to be lost first in order for it to be restored. Then God wants your children sometimes to see your pain and to see your suffering as well as to see you mount up. Right? So those kids will know if we trust in God like my father did, like my mother did, the same God that brought them out or bring me out. Huh? Do you know God's plan for you? Huh? Do you know God's plan for you? Uh, read what it says. And ye shall eat in plenty. Wow. You shall eat in plenty. So you lost a little bit in the first chapter. But over here in the second chapter, after you done suffered a little while, he said, You shall eat in plenty. Uh huh. And be satisfied. Be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Good God. And have dealt wondrously with you. Woo! Well, ain't nothing like joy when God to restore something. He said, You're going to praise the name of your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Huh? That's what you want to be able to do, huh? If you hold on. I mean, you don't know what to do. Just stand fast. Lord, I don't know what to turn to the left, neither to the right. Which way should I go? Sometimes you just got to stand still. Huh? We're calling the Moses. He's saying, see the salvation of God. Huh? Don't move your heart. Stand on his word. 
I don't read what it says. And my people should never be ashamed. My people should never be ashamed, he said. Good God, well, I'll bring you out huh, if you don't doubt me. If you hold on, huh? I won't make you ashamed. But you should be able to speak with the enemy in the gate. Glory to God. Read what it says. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Woo! Read. And that I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. And none else. None else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. Read. And it shall come to pass Boy, see, afterwards. See, we always read that one scripture right there. It shall come to pass. But you don't read the stuff before that. Uh, God came ready to rain that thing down. He had already restored what the locusts and ate, what the cattle worm and ate, right? Now he giving you food. Now after he gave you food, rain, a good cut of mine, he getting ready to give you joy. Oh, speak of joy. He getting ready to anoint you because you held out. You was faithful. You didn't complain. You didn't throw your hands up. For that cause, God getting ready to rain it down. Huh? Gonna give you a lot of rain. Good God of my read what it says. That I will pour out my spirit. Now I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. Woo! And huh? Read. Your sons yeah. and your daughters shall prophesy. Then he's going back get your sons and your daughters. He's going to bless them for your walk. No. Good God of my. Huh? Because you've been faithful. And then your sons and daughters have been watching you. So they've been faithful. So they're going to get a blessing just like you're going to get a blessing. God said, I'm going to pour my spirit upon them. Love it and God. Huh? Read what it says. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh -huh. Your young men shall see visions. Read. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. Uh -huh. In those days will I pour out my spirit. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. So be encouraged, dear heart. Be encouraged. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. God got a blessing for you. If you hold on, God going to restore those years. You might say, I've been walking this way for 10 or 15 years. I've been walking this way for 20 years. And this ain't happened. That ain't happened. Good God Almighty. But if you just hold on, God going to overturn. And he's going to overturn. And whoever right it is, he's going to give it to you. Love it to God. Huh? Don't you give in, dear heart. Huh? Don't you give in. David said, I look toward the hill for what's coming my help. He said, my help coming from the Lord. He that keepeth me neither slumber or sleeper. Don't you give up. Huh? You don't know God's plan for you. Huh? He's, it's in his thoughts. It's in his mind. Huh? Don't worry about what your assignment is. Don't worry about God going to direct you right to it. Just pray and do his will. You're going to find out what it is. Uh, when Paul wanted to know, he said, I want you to go down to the street talk space. And for one and nine, he going to tell you what to do. <laughs> Uh, and God's good season and God's due time to her. God will give you what you need, the answers that you need. And all of your losses, huh, all of your losses, he is going to restore it if you abide faithful. You don't believe it? Ask Job. Job will tell you, yeah, I lost my sons. I lost my daughters. I lost all my cattle, my asses, my sheep. Uh, but before I left here, God doubled everything that I had. Huh? It's on record. Uh, now we talk about Job. Now God wants us to be the next Job. Uh, that the generation under us uh, look at us and say, look what God done for them. And God be speaking to them about you and I. Have you considered my servant, X, Y, Z, that there's none like them? We are that epistle now. So hold fast and hold on because you don't know and somebody going to pick up your book of your life and read it to be encouraged. I hope you got something out of this word today. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer. Do you know God's plan for you? Praise God. And somebody may be listening to this word today. Now you don't know God's plan. But one thing you do know, that you want to serve him. You want to be a part of that blessing. If you do, all you have to do is repeat after me and believe the words that I'm speaking to you right now. Father, forgive me of sin. I repent of my sins. And I believe you gave your son Jesus to die for me and to shed his blood for my sins. And I believe he died and rose the third day. And I ask him to come into my heart. I make him my Lord and my Savior. And by faith, I believe that I am saved. Praise God. Say those words that I said, believe it in your heart. Uh, the Bible declares, thou shalt confess with thy mother, Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God is risen from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Find your good Bible teaching church that teach you the word of God, teach you about baptism, the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God will begin to fold his plan for you. 
praise God, how he has this great blessing for you. Maybe someone else out there looking for a home church. Uh, praise God. You've been searching for somewhere where God is going forth. The Spirit of God is moving. You can search no more. Bethel Deliverance Outreach Ministries is here for you. All you got to do is click on that same link. Praise God. And someone uh, will reach out to you and tell you how to become a member of Bethel Deliverance Outreach Ministries Church. We thank God for you. Again, we hope that God will continue to bless you and bless your life. Us also, dear hearts, that you that do not have a particular church to sow a tie to, we ask that you sow those ties to be down if you don't have a particular church to go to uh, or to sow to. Uh, sow them ties to be down. We can really use it and we can be a blessing. Uh, or it can be a blessing to us, rather. And we thank God for you for just thinking of us, praise God, to sow into our lives. Praise the Lord. And we'll be a good manager and a good steward over the funds that you sow to be down. Be down, continue to keep that faith. So those ties, pay those pledges, so we are on the move, so we can help somebody, uh, somebody on this side enjoy life and God. Hope that you got something out of this word. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Peace. Wasn't that a dynamic word coming from our pastor, Pastor Alonzo Walker Sr., and his phenomenal wife, First Lady Wanda Walker? If you love what you heard, come back and tune in next Saturday at 12 p.m. where you can learn and grow in your spiritual journey with Christ and be a part of our wonderful family. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye!